Hello everybody, we are Manuel Neira and Nicolas Malpic. We are the students of National University of Colombia and we were taking a computational neuroscience course and uh, we are going to um, uh, talk about uh, two different simulations. Uh, the first one, external drive to inventory cells induce alternating episodes of high and low amplitude oscillations. And the second one, internetwork interaction, interactions, impact of connections between oscillatory neuronal networks and uh, on oscillation frequency and pattern. Uh, we are going to explain uh, the, the, the two different results. And that's all. Let's start. The first example has the purpose of model the brain behavior in order to understand the inhibitory and excitatory cells oscillation as support to see the function in complex process inside the brain because there is a direct relationship between those oscillations and the cognitive and behavioral functions like memory, attention, learning and working memory. We're going to use uh, a excitatory cells and 20 inhibitory cells reflecting the radio of excitatory to inhibitory cell numbers found in most cortical areas. Uh, cells were defined as a one compartment conductance based model with a length and diameter of 20 micrometers and contained the Hodgkin Huxley sodium and potassium channels responsible for actions potential generation uh, as well as leakage channels. Uh, the change in membrane potential was given by the equation. As you can see, we present the current inside the neur neuron in terms of the capacitance and the voltage given by the relation of conductance parameters in each different channel. In order to have a close to reality simulation, we have to do an adjust to the connection between networks probability. Then, we apply a correction factor for excitatory to inhibitory cells of 65% and for excitatory to excitatory of 30% using a conductance parameter of 1 picosiemens by micrometer square, a reverse bias voltage of 0 millivolts and a tau or TEM delay of 2 milliseconds. By the same way, the inhibitory to excitatory case, we did similar assumptions for inhibitory to excitatory cells, a, porten a percentage of connection of 60% and inhibitory to inhibitory at 55% with two different conductance and excitation voltage of 80 millivolts with a time delay of 10 milliseconds. With the purpose of include a random characteristic, the simulation has been doted with two variable elements in a range described following the simulation conditions. This action in order to keep in mind the effect of two different kinds of inputs and how this influences the spike rate and the firing rate in the neuron conductance based model. To obtain the type of conditions with the biggest effect over the oscillation amplitude on a combination of excitatory and inhibitory cells, we applied a stimulus on the network with all possible combinations of external action potential, AP, and continuous depolarized current, CDC. So, when the simulation was with only continuous depolarized current stimulus, the oscillation result was three different response. First one, supra threshold oscillation. Second one, sub threshold oscillation. And third one, above and below threshold oscillation. Meanwhile, when the external action potential was in combination with continuous depolarized current, the response of the cells was a shuffle of high and low amplitude. In concordance, the conclusion was the terminal the, that the, te the minimal simulation conditional is stimulate inhibitory cells with a combination of CDC and AP and just CDC for the excitatory cells. As you can see in the run control window of the software neuron, we put 40,000 milliseconds in order to show the desirable results. In this graphic, 
we can see the raster diagram of cells firing as response of inhibitory and excitatory cells, generating a strong fluctuation in oscillation amplitude in an interval of 40 seconds with a sampling of 6 milliseconds. With high amplitude episodes HAE alternating with low amplitude episodes LAE. As we say, in this simulation, we use the minimal simulation condition AT and CDC for inhibitory and CDC for excitatory cells. Irregular fluctuations in the amplitude of chondroid oscillation have been observed in many frequencies band in brain regions, but the mechanisms by which they are generated are unknown. We showed here that a generic model network consisting of interconnected excitatory and inhibitory cells, which were driven by action potential and current input from areas external to the network generated oscillatory activity in the alpha-beta frequency band in which uh, high amplitude episodes alternated irregularly with low amplitude episodes. The minimal condition for this alternation to arrive was, was external action potential input. External action potential input interfered with the ongoing network oscillation generated by reciprocal interaction between excitatory and inhibitory cells. Finally, in this thermal graphic, we can see the strong fluctuation in oscillation amplitude, with high amplitude episodes alternating with low amplitude episodes. We can see an arbitrary 15 seconds interval of network activity in both the excitatory population and inhibitory population. In this example, the inhibitory cells receive the external input in the form of a constant depolarizing current and a train of action potential that activate an excitatory synapse. The excitatory cells receive the external input only in the form of CDC input. This represents cholinergic input. And the AP input reflects background synaptic input from areas external to the network. As can be seen in this figure, both the excitatory and the inhibitory population exhibited high and low, and in most cases, the transition between high and low occurred around the same time in both populations. Okay, that was all about the first example. Now we are going to talk about the second one, internetwork interactions, impact of connection between oscillatory neuronal networks and on oscillation frequency and pattern. As you can see, the model cell is the same as the first one, so we won't uh, talk about this model again. The first example, in this simulation, we need to establish the probability for the formation of connections between inhibitory and excitatory cells in all possible configurations. For this part, we use this notation. The first and the second letter in a subgroup refer to presynaptic and postsynaptic cells of the connection, respectively, and the upper and lower case letters indicate fast and slow network, respectively. So, the probabilities of inhibitory to excitatory connection is about 0 0.15 for excitatory to excitatory connection is about 0 0.15 The probabilities of excitatory to inhibitory connection is about 0 0.15 and the probabilities of inhibitory to inhibitory connection is about 0 0.15 For the excitatory A and PA synapses the maximal conductance parameters are given by excitatory to excitatory, 4 dB cosinus by micrometer square, excitatory to inhibitory, 24 dB cosinus by micrometer square, with a reversal potential of 0 mV. And for the inhibitory DADAA synapses, the maximal conductance parameters are 8 dB cosinus by micrometer square for inhibitory to excitatory and 4 picosinus by micrometer square for inhibitory to inhibitory with a reversal potential of minus 80 millivolts. For the analyzing network dynamics, uh, we analyze it separate, separately for the four population in the model. 
the E and the I population for the slow network and the E and the I population for the fast network. In the case of fire rate histograms to describe the network activity in each of the population, uh, we constructed but we, we constructed them by counting spikes in time beings of the of six milliseconds. Uh, this mean size related to a sample frequency of about uh, 167 hertz, much higher than the oscillation frequencies in our simulations. In the Fourier ana analysis, the fast Fourier transform of the activity in each cell population, uh, the, to smooth in the histograms, we first convolved them with an alpha function, as you see, uh, using an alpha of 0 0.15 and time is in 6 milliseconds units, uh, equal to the mean size. The function was evaluated for 5 consecutive time beams. The convolved signal, signal was used as input for the Welsh peri periodogram MATLAB algorithm. For each cell population, we identified the components in the fast Fourier transform that were local maximum and minimum. Of these components is then the peak frequency of the particular cell population. For the wavelet analysis, uh, in order to analyze how the power amplitude of the oscillation varied over the time, uh, we perform a wavelet analyzing using the Torrance algorithm implemented in MATLAB. In this part, we are going to discuss the result. So, as we can see, shown the Fourier transform of the system plot by a spectral amplitude versus frequency. The graphic shows peaks at the base frequency at 20 Hz and the first and the second harmonic on 43 and 64 hertz respectively. The final result of this example is an expression of a single oscillation frequency with the strong fluctuations in power. Shown are the Fourier transform, wavelet transform and raster diagram of cell firing as we saw from the excitatory population of the target network, the slow network and the fast network, the inset in a show the connectivity scheme from the fast to the slow networks, in which the I and E connection had a CF equal to 0 0.5, and in the time interval shown, the slow network exp expressed its own base frequency in 20.4 Hz. But with strong fluctuations in power, the inset in shows the connectivity, connectivity scheme from the slow to the fast network, in which the E to I connections had a CF equal to 7. The fast network expresses the base frequency of the slow network with the strong fluctuations in power. Uh, we can see a situation in which again two frequency the base frequency of the slow of the slow network or source network and the base frequency of the fast network the target network coexisted in an alternating fashion in the fast network however more so than in the cases shown in this figure each frequency also fluctuated in power during during the episode so that it was the dominant frequency for example about 2 t equal a 33.7 seconds and uh, t equal to 33.9 seconds the base frequency of the slow network was the only frequency component in the network but uh, its power was not constant constant over time